Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. All the time. Amen. All the time I'm hungry. <laughs> Hope all of you are blessed in this wonderful day, feeling blessed, receiving the tangible blessing of Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to start off by asking questions because I always like starting by asking questions. Who here has cried here before? Yeah, me, a lot. Everyone? Yeah. This is Everyone cried. nearly a rhetorical question. It is a rhetorical question. Everyone's cried. From baby to childhood to even adulthood, everyone has cried. Amen? Amen. Okay. But when it comes to crying, there are types of crying. There's the nice crying. Darling, I love you. That's the altar cry or she's grown up. And then there is the ugly cry. And then the makeup running down the face or it's not coming out the nose. This is the ugly cry. And it's the worst. This is when you look the worst. You do not want someone to see you when you are in your ugly cry. And then you're just tapping and you're going crazy. This ugly cry. But why do we go through this cry? I was thinking. These types of cries, they come out in different situations. And most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, when someone ugly cries, is when they have become distant from God. This is true. Most of the time, when you go into a problem, you go ugly cry to your family. When you go through some kind of stress, you ugly cry by yourself in the room. And then you go to God. And this is where you and I, as followers of Christ, stumble. Where we go on our own selves, completely believing that we can do great things by ourselves. And then we come back running to God. <laughs> God, 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 all this happened to me. And you act surprised. You act with all this shock. How has this happened to me? It's because you had this distance with God. The funny thing is, in this period of time, we have something called social distancing. This is where you have to distance yourselves from the public as much as possible to prevent the spread of COVID. But for some reason, a lot of us here practice this with God. We social distance before COVID-19 was existent with God himself. And we all thought this was a great idea. This concept was genius. The man who has the most power in the world, let's forget about him and go by ourselves. How clever we are. How can we be so silly to think that we can leave the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, how we all love to praise Him. Jehovah Jireh, the Great One, the Protector, the Overcomer. We think it's so easy to leave Him and live a steady life. This is where you and I stumble. If you all turn to John chapter 16, verse 33. John chapter 16, verse 33. Let me read this for you. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Let me repeat this again. Look at this verse. I have told you these things, so that in me... You have peace. In this world, you have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Not you have overcome the world. 
You cannot overcome every problem by yourself. Tell your neighbor, you can't do this by yourself. You cannot do it by yourself. You're foolish to think if you can take everything that life throws at you by yourself. It will end up horribly, disastrous. The most ugliest cry will come out. You cannot face things alone. And look at, look at this. That in me. Not in you. That in me, God is saying. So when you're with me, you have this peace. You have this calmness. You have this sense of security. You have this protection. You know how a mother cares for a child when it rocks it in the arm? The child has no worry. It knows it's got its lunch coming. It knows it's got clothes, house. It's got clothes. It's got a nice family. It's got warmth. It's got protection. Nothing to worry about. Because you are with a protector. But when you're without me, what do you have? Trouble. Very simple. In the world, you have trouble. In the Ulagatala, Talavalita, Ereke. Amen? You only have headache, you only have problem, you only have back pain, you only have a headache, you have all these things. Everyone has this complaint. Shoulder valley, kai valley, idupa valley, inga kaal inga valley kithi, nadanda inga udupa valley kithi. Illa valley ko. Because you are in the world. But then, this is the next sentence which is the powerful one. But, take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen. God is saying, not you. God is saying, not you. Be very clear. Tell your neighbor, not you. Not you. <clears throat> you cannot face the world alone. You cannot face the world alone. A lot of people fall into this trap. This is why I tell you, God will never tell you and establish you every single plan that you have ahead of you in your life. Because this arrogance comes into you. If God was to tell every single person how their life would be and how it would be planned, you will take this plan by yourself and leave God. You take the blueprints and go alone. This is why God will never, listen to me, God will never fully tell you how your life will go. He may give you hints. He may give you directions. He may tap you in the right path. But you will never fully know where you are going to be. If I was to ask my dad, did you know you're going to be a pastor 20 years ago? No way he would have said I knew. Maybe he had a sense that he's going towards it, but never he knew he would come to this stage. If I told Darren, you'll be worshipping like this five, six years ago, no way he would have known. But he had a tap and a sense of direction from God on where he's going to go. Your path will never be given to you fully. I didn't know how to be here talking about back pains. About Talavalis. Did I know? No. No way. <laughs> the last thing I expected. But by the grace of God, he showed me certain directions of where I should go and where I shouldn't go. And now I'm here. But what I'm trying to get at is you will never be able to know the whole entirety of your plan because if you do, like it says here, you will go into the world and you will face the problem because you will forget who's the one that gave you this plan. And so that's why in the very start I said, go by prayer and petition to God continuously. He will constantly give you reminders and updates of what's going in your life. Like your phone needs a software update, you need constant updates from God on what you need to do next. A life is horrible if they do not know its purpose. It's the worst thing. If I went to back in the day, in caveman times, and gave them a spoon, does that caveman know what the spoon is going to be functioned for? He's going to use that spoon to scratch his head. He will not know the function or the purpose of that utility. Or the first time that you saw a mobile phone. 
You do not know what it does. What is this magic contraption? This is how your grandparents will feel at times. When you pull it out and you talk to them and they're thinking, what is this going on? Because they do not know the purpose of that idea until you explain to them, go, ah, oh, this connects to this and this is how you can talk to that. Or the first time you taught something or how to drive a car, you understand its purpose. But when something does not know its purpose, it is used in the wrong manner. It is used in the wrong manner. If I did not know what an iPad was, completely did not know, I could end up using this as a chopping board. Literally. Because I did not know the purpose. So imagine if you do not know your purpose. It is horrible. It ends in calamity. Because not only have you failed yourself, but you have failed God in what he has placed you to do in this world. Don't think you're just a human to come, go along and pass away. God has placed a purpose in every single person. And each, each person's purpose is not the same. Not everyone is going to be a pastor. Not everyone is going to be a worship leader. Everyone has different purposes placed in each and every one of them. One of you may be a chef. God bless you because your talent is to feed those that need feeding. One of you may be a mechanic. God bless you because you may be able to fix a vehicle of someone in need. And so everyone has been distributed with different gifts and talents to Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. But for you to understand your talent, you need to go to the creator, not creation. Only, I said this before, only Apple will have the manufacturer's guide to their product. Not Samsung. Your Rolex watch will only have an operator's guide from Rolex, not Nike. The operator guide is being given from the creator on how to find its purpose. This guide is the Bible. If you do not utilize the Bible, if you do not use this word of God, you have failed. Very simply. Very simply. Find your purpose. And so I went a bit deviated from the message here, but God is telling me to tell you this. But what I'm trying to come at, it is that in me that's God put. That in me you may overcome these things. Not by yourself, but through Christ Jesus. Amen. And so stop getting used to ugly crying by yourself. Ending up in trouble and always ugly crying. It is not a pleasant sight. It is not the Mona Lisa. It is not the most beautiful thing to look at. You can tell. Your bed partner will know when you have ugly cried. They will question, how did I fall in love with this person? <laughs> because everything goes, your face goes red. <laughs> oh, 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 parents, look at your child when they do a mistake. Ugly cry comes out. Sound effects are wonderful. God bless them. And they give every sound effect and they give I have to put the mummy at the middle. <laughs> and they're drooling and it's all it's nasty, they're sweating, the hair's on the, all messy. But you don't need to go through this ugly cry. You don't need to face this ugly cry every time. If you want to ugly cry, ugly cry to God. Honestly, ugly cry to God. And this is where it says, Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. If you want to ugly cry, do it here. Pray and ugly cry to God. And he will give you a solution. Don't go for the solution yourself and then come ugly crying to God. It is the wrong order. First go to God. Ugly cry your heart out behind closed doors. No one wants to see it. No one wants to see you ugly cry. I'm sorry if I broke your heart there. But ugly cry to God. He's willing to see that. 
He's willing to accept every single tear that you go through behind those closed doors. And so cry and cry and, and give your heart out to God there. And however much you glorified him there, doesn't matter about who sees it. As long as he sees it, it's enough for you to know, I am good. Amen? Tell your neighbor, I am good. I am good. And so, we need to stop getting used to these prayers. Psalms chapter 107 verse 19. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. Let me re read that again. Then they cried to their Lord in trouble and then he saved them from their distress. A lot of us get used to ugly crying by ourselves and then going to God. Don't get comfortable in that situation. God saves you, but you don't need to go through all that pain, that anguish, that suffering that you face through. First go to God and he will give you the solution. What I'm trying to get at is you are not the most strongest person to face things by yourself. Only God can help you. You need, let me, let me emphasize, you need God. It is not something that just happens. It is a need in your life. God is a necessity. God is a must. Tell your neighbor, God is a must. God is not a however, God is not a maybe, God is a must. A car must have fuel inside in order to move forward. You must have God inside in order to move forward. Very simple. A phone cannot run without electricity, you cannot run without God. Very simple. More something more relevant to you? You cannot run without food. No? No? You need food, yes. You need your biryani, you need your chicken, you need your soda. Talking to my brother here because he loves eating. <laughs> Amen. But you need the food. You need that. In the same way, you need God. He's not just something I come to just when I'm in trouble. He is something I need 24-7 of my life. Me, without God, I am failed. If you're without God, you have failed. You have failed miserably. Jesus is calling. Jesus requires attention from you. And he will reciprocate the same. But I tell you this. You want God's attention. You want God's attention. Because don't let God turn away from you one second. Because that's what the devil prays for day and night. When is this Briani Desa coming to me? I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to slip up. I'm waiting to take you over. I'm waiting to devour you and ruin your life. It is my way of vengeance to God. Don't let God forget you. I'm changing the script. Not don't let you forget God. Don't let God forget you. It's worse. It is the worst. And my final point. 1 Chronicles chapter 16 verse 11. 1 Chronicles chapter 16 verse 11. It is written, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. This is ESV. In NIV it says, Look to the Lord and His strength. Seek His face always. In ESV it's put presence continually. In NIV it says, Seek His face always. When you are in God's presence, you have gained attention. Therefore, His face is towards you. He's facing you. So whenever you're out of God's presence, his face is away from you and you are not there. There's no connection there. 
the main word for me that struck me was continually. This is where you and I slip up. It's got to be continuous, this bond that you have with God. Just that speaking that you have with God, just talking to God. God, how, how is my day going to go? Thank you, God, for these blessings. Thank you, God, for this food. Thank you, God, for this household. Father God, speak to me a word. Give me a revelation of this verse today. Just have this bond with God always. Tell your neighbor, don't agree, cry straight to God. Just going there through problem. Ugly cry in the presence of God. Because that's where you slip up. That's where you and I slip up. A lot of the times in my life when I've slipped up is when I have not been close to God. When I lose that connection from God, immediately problem comes. Problem after problem after problem. And once that problem comes, then we go back crying to God, saying, God, forgive me for forgetting. God, don't forget me. It's this point that I really want to get across. You cannot face things alone. You cannot. I don't care if you're six foot, if you're four foot, if you have the confidence of a lion. All of that is useless if God is not by your side. Because the story of David and Goliath proved that. The size of David compared to the size of Goliath, incomparable. When you read the height, it talks about of how Goliath tall was. I can't remember, I think it was seven foot and odd. Can you imagine how big of a human he must have been? His mother fed him well. To be that big, that way, and the armor he carried. Goliath was something you would fear if you walked. But not David. It's because he understand who he was with. He understand, he caught the presence of God. He caught God's attention. Tell your neighbor, you need to grab God's attention. We try so many things to grab so many people's attention. Dressing nice, talking well, parents talking about their ch children great, to grab the attention of others. We do all this. We put so much effort to grabbing attention for someone that we won't even remember in five years' time possibly. But the person you need to struggle and give so much effort for and really need to grab attention for is God. You, you let God just look at you, your life's changed. You just need to get and grab God's attention. You need to be screaming to the world and getting God's attention. God's attention is enough for you to have your life turned around. That's it. The key to life, grab God's attention. And there are steps to this, of course. Whether it be the baptism and then continually explaining God, God, I am a sinner, forgive me. And then going through prayer and then reading the word of God continually and trying to build this bond and relationship with your true love. Don't ugly cry alone. Go to God and do your ugly cry. For him is the most beautiful thing. He's eager to see your ugly cry. He's waiting for it. He's happy to see it. Because he knows then that you want his attention and he's ready to give yours. Amen. Don't ugly cry wrong. Amen. And I'll pass it on to my father.